guess I gotta start by making uh, any content and then essentially just adjust from there. Um, in this video, I kind of want to go over some of my breeding aspects. I'm trying to really uh, document this a little bit more than what I've been doing. Um, for the last couple of years, I've basically just been um, recollecting stuff by taking pictures or putting down notes and things like that, um, which has been pretty, pretty good. But uh, sometimes I, I kind of have to go back to a visual and or go back to um, sometimes I basically revert back to older methods of keeping and then I'll really just adjust from there to see how the animals are and how they adjust to that setting as well. Like for example, um, if I have really, really frantic animals and they're essentially always scared and the whole breeding process, introducing them to another animal and having to deal with me, um, basically they're going to need hides. They need a, a little bit of a security in a sense. So that way they feel um, comfortable enough to come out when another monitor lizard that they're not used to is around. Um, for me, this has been uh, learning behavior. Learning behavior has been quite... Uh, a lot of the details are just so subtle. And so if you're not really paying attention as much as you should be, essentially what you can do is just miss... Uh, miss those subtle details or miss those things that are cued in for you to really be paying attention to and uh, help save your animals or get them to get along to the next process which is why uh, why we're here today and what why I'm making this video um, I'm really trying to get my adults to breed that um, they're essentially not accustomed to each other they haven't really been around each other. I keep most of them separate just because they're quite aggressive when you put them together. Um, I, I'd rather not risk anything um, other than breeding. You know, I, would, I just don't want to risk any of the animals on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's just a lot to go uh, and a lot of headache, I guess, to deal with if you're having them fight all the time, which I kind of have them do with here. So with this whole fighting and killing each other and, and all this... Um, I've learned to use some methods that basically aren't too conventional or they're more old school or um, maybe someone hasn't really thought about it just yet. But what I'm doing is just simplifying my enclosure. Um, I'm not allowing the animals to hide too much if they aren't frantic. Um, if they're pretty well behaved, not really aggressive, not biters, then essentially I allow them to just be in the cage together get them accustomed to each other and hopefully that'll lead into breeding but sometimes it's just not that easy so um for example i just wanted to get a little bit closer so one of my setups here and this is a setup that is just really for introduction it's not really for breeding there's no real nest bin in there it's just to get animals used to each other um, And so it's really just maybe a couple little logs, um, nothing too, nothing too dense as far as hides or places to go. I really want them to maybe dip away from each other if they really need to quickly, but more so they're really used to each other. They're essentially exposed to each other. Um, now this can lead in two ways. Um, it'll basically show me how compatible they are in the initial 24 hours, 48 hours, one week, uh, 30 minutes. And sometimes uh, the attack can basically happen so fast where uh, if that's going on, you basically read it and pull the mail out or pull whoever you have out as the aggressor. Um, a lot of times putting a female into a male's cage um, can lead to a male being overly dominant and then sometimes bite a female. That's what I've been experienced. But I've also experienced introducing a male into a female's cage where she has completely um, overtaken and claimed everything, including the nest bin. Um, once a female's been honed to the nest bin, in my experience, the male has no chance. Um, 
Basically, if he comes too close, she's going to run him away or she's going to try to kill him because he's intruding on her eggs or nest bin. And that area is essentially quite sacred to her. It's something that she's going to quite return to regularly and everything like that. So um, for me, that whole introduction and getting into the, I guess, essentially them being compatible, this, uh, this whole stage here since I introduced them yesterday has been roughly 24 hours. I really just want to get them uh, used to each other so that way I have another pair. Now the animal that I have in here currently, he is essential to my breeding project. Um, something that I've been working with for the last, uh, I would guess a couple years. Um, he himself is only 10 months old, but the whole process to make a lizard like this um, has been quite hard. I essentially need a fertile, non-parthenogenic male. Um, I just want to clarify that I have quite a few mangrove projects going on, um, breeding and non-breeding, where they're just laying eggs um, regardless of male or not, and the eggs are fertile. Um, so I don't want to use too many of those offspring that are parthenogenic. I really need to hone in on a docile male. Um, that's, uh, that's where we get into the next, uh, next thing here. As far as Indicus complex introducing, um, whether it's like Varanus albar or, uh, Dordianus or, um, or peach throat monitors or any of those that we have in the States here that people have been trying to breed and essentially haven't been able to because of the aggression or just a hard finding compatible animals. Sometimes they'll kill each other unless it's that very pinpointed time of uh, them going through a cycle and then you introduce the male for breeding only. And that's a very small window. I would say a week to two weeks max, something like that, where you can basically have him in there. He's only honed into breeding because of the scents and pheromones and stuff that she's giving off as she's uh, becoming gravid or she's uh, going through the whole process. <clears throat> now, I have the female in here. She's a little shy, so there are a couple hides in there. And um, it's still very, very simple setup. Okay, uh, it's, it's quite janky, but um, it's really just like a couple hides, some platforms for them to get underneath, and that's it. It's just for introduction. It's not to support anybody's life for a long time unless the lizard is living in there solely. And yeah. Now, this whole introduction part, if you're going to try it with either you know your your male and female or anything like that where you're just trying to get them used to each other this is what i recommend you do first but there are also some other setups where i have it much more complicated and that's what we're going to get into just next here now i'm going to try to get this where this setup is essentially six by three by three and it is fully decked out it's probably got several hides in there um quite a few logs places to go underneath the soil underneath the water dish a nest bin all that stuff now that is uh for animals that are killers animals that are essential fighting all the time or um, they bask at different times. They never bask together. They don't even eat together. Um, now, what I do with those animals is I, I take much more precaution. I, I have to. Um, I basically have to kind of stay awake all the time, be home all the time, and or make sure that when they're out, they also have enough uh, food and basking opportunity and to get to their own sources. Now, if they don't, uh, one's going to be quite hindered by the whole process of breeding. And you, um, you obviously, you don't want that. You know, you need the female to be um, on point. You need the female to essentially be healthy enough, hydrated enough, and also basking enough to basically get her juices going. But if the male is taking over 
all of those opportunities every time because he's going to be a bigger, aggressive, more dominant animal. Um, he'll essentially take all the resources and leave her with nothing. And so you kind of want to be paying attention to that. If you have to take out the male during feeding time, or I even have setups where there's very, very tiny tubes that I put food in that the female can only get to. Um, those are some methods. I, I, I can't run them all off my head at the same time, but some things that are essentially within the setup designed just for the female. Um, it can be like the nest bin. I have a very, very tiny hole just for her entry only, and I don't make any, anything within the, 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 I guess, enlarging the diameter by an inch or so would allow the male to get in. And so, um, yeah, things like that where you're paying attention and you're helping the female get her rounds going. And even if you have to use 24 seven lighting because the male's out all the time and when he's asleep, she's gonna sneak out and get her few hours of basking in. Um, you know, 24 hours isn't always really recommended, um, but a lot of us breeders use it just because it, it gives the animal more opportunity to do, do things, especially the, the female. And if they can escape the light and go into burrows and things like that where they don't, um, I guess they're not exposed to light 24 seven, um, they can have a sense of a photo period. Now, um, when you are dealing with more, more animals, you really only want to hone in on your pair. Don't try to add another female in there until the whole process is done. And, um, you know, don't complicate things. Um, having a 1.2 sounds nice, but you're all, you may always end up with a female that's going to be the subordinate one and, or the ones that it's just the, the odd man out from the whole, the whole process. It kind of is in the corner or it's an animal that doesn't get to nest because someone's hogging the nest in, um, which is the current dominant female. Okay. Now, um, when you are having to deal with really frantic animals, because that's what I, I think most people are dealing with, um, is they're dealing with, uh, you know, aggressive males or uh, it's just the, the female attacking the male because you've introduced him into her cage. Um, it's going to be a thing where you, you kind of, even though you're scared about losing an animal or getting an animal bit, um, in this way, scared money don't make no money. You know, you got to have to try. Um, you have to take all your shots as much as you can, every shot that you can. Um, I introduce my animals regularly, even though this animal was roughly only about a year old. Um, I still have to keep him accustomed to other animals being in his closure. So he's literally getting um, kind of moved around a little bit from female to female, just getting to know her. He's probably been with three. He's cool with two, but he'll fight all the time with one of them. Now that's when I get to learn some animals just aren't compatible. And so if, let's say if you had a pair that you've been trying forever and ever, chances are you have an incompatible pair. Um, now, even if you tried all those methods and you tried all those techniques and everything like that, and it just didn't work out for you, um, you may have to use alternate animals. And that's why I have like 15 mangroves to work with. You know, if you had only one or two, I mean, your chances of, of working on that pair, if they grew up together or they're really good and the male's really good, the female's really good, um, then, you know, right on to, you know, but um, not all the time is, are, are those odds going to be working with people? People have multiple um, options, multiple females, multiple males. I currently have, uh, uh, dang, I currently have a, uh, I have three males and maybe 10 females. And so I try to work around those, uh, those numbers, especially this time of the year when most animals are breeding in the su Southern hemisphere. Okay. Um, I'll be getting back more into introduction as this pair comes along. Um, I'm going to be trying to keep them together as much as I can only because this female is, or sorry, not this animal, but the female that's in here is, uh, 